Howdy, howdy. Welcome on in to the pre-show before the free show. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome into the pre-show before the free show. Did you say that? Yes. How sure are you? You were turned up so loud because the last person to sit there was Ish. Oh, and he is and he, he's a low talker. He is notorious mouse talker. So he is a he you, is a you and him are on the opposite correct. Uh, I'm end a, of the vocal spectrum. I'm a very um yeah. I'm very uh uh yeah. Uh welcome into the pre show before the free show. There was something I wanted to talk about in the pre show, but now I forgot it and that's gonna be tough for me. Oh well. It's gone. It's gone forever. Um, is this football Thursday? There's, th I, is there only three games tonight? Yeah. Total? Yeah. Only three games, which is... It, well, actually, there might only be two, because Timpson and Garrison got moved. Mm. They got moved to Oh, Friday. that's right. There may only be two. So, Toller and Marlin is tonight, mm -hmm. and... Let's see. I think there's, I, th I think there's three. We tweeted out, so I think we tweeted out that there was three, which... Might have been fake news. Who um, knows? Toller and Marlin is tonight. Ganado and Refurio mm -hmm. is tonight. Part two. And Albany Collinsville is tonight. Okay. All right. Then, then. There should have been four. All four of the two A games were going to be played. Okay. But let me ask you a question, Pickle. Did you see? Did you watch the Netflix, I think original series, Squid Game? No, I did not. You didn't. No. Are you familiar with the conceit of the show? Yeah, I know we've talked. We talked about it on a pre show before. Talked about it. Yeah. Um, essentially, it's a it was a it's a Korean show wherein uh, and always do subs not dubs, folks. Uh, wherein they um, lead these people are thrown into a kind of uh, a series of games mm -hmm. wherein. If you lose, uh, you die. <laughs> but like, if you win at the very end, you make like a life changing amount of money. Yeah, it's right. like it's basically like real life Hunger Games. Yeah, it's real life Hunger Games. There's some of that element to it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, th that is a brief overview. Did you know that very quickly have turned that into a real game show on Netflix? I did not called know. called Squid Game: The Challenge, wherein now they are doing. Um, for example, one of them in is um, they they play like red light, green light, right? But like if you get caught on a red light, then you get shot. Not in the that was in the the original series, obviously not in the um, jeez in the the game show, right? The real life game show. They're not killing people on the air. We are a messed up society. We're not that messed up. But there's a date. There's a the, a story now. Coming out of, uh, I don't know where this is coming out of. There's no Dateline. But go and say Dateline. Hang on. Say, uh -oh. talk again. Dateline. Dateline. Thank you. It's parts unknown. Contestants on Netflix's Squid Game The Challenge are seeking compensation for injuries they allegedly suffered, suffered on the show. Uh, Express Solicitors is representing two players who say it suffered injuries such as hypothermia and nerve damage. Uh, players competed for a $4.56 million prize on the spinoff show based on the South Korean drama Squid Game. Um, okay, first of all, if you're getting hurt doing a television show, like, that sucks. My guess is, if you went into a show inspired by a television uh, drama about people who get killed if they don't compete well... Mm -hmm. My guess is that they had you sign some paperwork and that you probably had to have a decent idea of what you were getting into. I'm not, I don't know if I have a ton of sympathy. I have some, but not a ton of sympathy if you're like after the fact, like, oh, I got hurt. Um, I'm going to sue the, sue the show. That feels like the most obvious thing that the people who created the show would cover themselves for. And if they didn't, then please sue the pants off them. Uh, but that, that feels like a real, like, what do you want it to, it could, it could. I think you have to sign a waiver for yeah. it to be on like literally any show. Like it could be Wheel of Fortune and I yeah. guarantee you they're making you sign a waiver because if you fall getting up on the stage, we're not responsible. Like, do you, th do you think anybody's ever gotten hurt? Like spinning the wheel? 
I would think it's pretty heavy. It feels pretty heavy. It looks like people are struggling. Like, there was one, they had a celebrity one where it was a bunch of NFL players. Mm -hmm. And, like, even the NFL guys, like, who are some of the strongest people yeah. on earth, were I, like, all right. And they had to, like, kind of give it a rip. I feel know? like for show latency purposes, like, it has to be kind of heavy. Because if you had some, like, if it was light and you spun it, it, it would, would spin just forever. go. Like, I feel it like feels it like, has to be it feels heavy. Like, it feels like if you give it a real good spin. Mm -hmm. It still doesn't, like, It should spin probably go around about one and a half times, yes. right? So that means that the wheel is heavy. That means the wheel has to be and heavy. I don't know or at if least that's, it's weighted down. I was just going to say, I don't know if it's because it's weighted down on purpose or if it's just because that wheel is really big. Like, it's a thick piece it's a of big wood. Wheel. So it might not have to be weighted down all that much. Do you think anybody's ever been hurt on Jeopardy? Again, falling would be the only way. Like, you tripping think, over something. You don't think, like, thumb? Like... I don't feel like they have a too many injury? people that might be in the age of arthritis on Jeopardy. Here's here's another it's question. It's a fairly like e and this feels 30s to 40s this crowd. This feels knowable. This feels knowable. On the buzzer, you can only use one hand, right? That's got to be a mm -hmm. rule cuz otherwise you'd see people doing this. Yeah. No, it's definitely one rule. It you has have to be to like it has to be the thumb mm -hmm. or it has to be like you can only use one hand on yeah. the on, on the buzzer. That brings up another good point. What do you think like the perfect age is for Jeopardy? Because I would say 45. Really? I would have gone younger than that. I feel like because feel you still need to be pretty darn in tune with some of the like younger generational things. Yeah. I would have said like Anywhere between 32 and 37 feels like a good median range. 32 might still be a little young, but like 37 yeah, feels but, right to me. Yeah, but they'll also, and I guess, the, I guess the thing is like you got to be a real nerd as far as like oh anybody going on there is going to be super smart. Art yeah. history and like stuff like I don't know because like you're right they they have started I think to to uh, keep appeal, incentivizing the youth to appeal to the younger audience they keep putting younger like topics on there yeah but like there's a lot of older topics too yeah and I just assume that anyone going on Jeopardy is gonna have the older topics way more on lock than maybe what the younger topics would be how old Ken Jennings I don't Ken know. Jennings is 49 which means that when he was cooking on um. When he was cooking on Jeopardy. Yeah, he was there for a long he time. He was, when was this? He was on, okay, no, then he was, that was back in um, 2004, which means that he was 30. Okay, see, yeah. Now, and he's, and he is probably the greatest Jeopardy, Jeopardy player, player of all time. Yeah, I agree. So he was 30. So that, that would go to your point of, yeah, yeah. go younger. You gotta, you, I feel I guess, like 30, like I, I was thinking around 32, 33 at first, and then I thought about it, maybe that was a little too young, but I just feel like if you're going to be on that show, you obviously have a fascination with learning and all of that. So it's like you, you get all that from the moment that you get in school until afterwards, it, but it, you also have to be up to date. It feels like there's two peaks. I think there's mm -hmm. two peaks. You either need young savant, yeah, or you need mid forties, just really in touch with everything. Really in touch with anything, just broad base of knowledge person. Yes, I think that's right. Um, I love Jeopardy. Yeah, I, I love absolutely Jeopardy love Jeopardy. I love Jeopardy too. Um, we started recording Wheel of Fortune though, because Hank's in the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, that rocks because Mallory was making fun of me the other day no, because I love right. Wheel of Fortune. I have Wheel of Fortune for my PS2. That rocks. All very sober. Mm -hmm. A lot of sober playing of Wheel of Fortune on the PS2. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, there really is. There is definitely non-sober playing of Wheel of Fortune, but there definitely is a lot of sober playing of Wheel of Fortune. I feel like, I don't know, I whenever we watch Jeopardy, I don't know, I feel like Jeopardy, okay, Jeopardy feels like, Jeopardy, w I'm going to make a comparison here. Mm -hmm. Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, Mario Kart. Everyone is pretty sure that they're really good at all three, <laughs> yes. right? Everyone is pretty sure that <laughs> yes. they're one of the best in the world at those three things. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, like, we're not. No. Like, because if everyone, it's kind of like the thing that everybody thinks they're a good driver, but like, n like, they're a bad driver. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Yep. So, what is, like, to, to be excellent at that, those are th three things that I think we all overstate our, our, good, our, our quality is. Yes. Although I'm pretty good at Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I will I'm say. I'm a word guy. Uh, well, and it's funny because you said non-sober Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to disagree with that because non-sober is Mario Kart. Oh, uh, well, that's. That's 110% It's the only time that. you can drive while impaired. Correct. Exactly right. Anyway, hit the theme expo.
Our pets' heads are falling off. Y'all! There we go. Let's try that. Yes! Yes! <laughs> y'all! He said, for no reason. <laughs> From the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Mothership here in beautiful Louisville, Texas. It's Texas Football Today, a program with microphones, ostensibly. My name is Greg Tepper. I'm the managing editor of Dave Campbell's Texas Football a Magazine, texasfootball.com, a corresponding website. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. Whether you're watching us live at texasfootball.com, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all the places, or listen to us in the podcast, which you can subscribe to on the podcast vendor of your choice. Either way, thank you for doing your part. Support your local mediocre internet show. The funny thing about these community coffee cups, two of them are up here for uh, product placement purposes because our friends at Community Coffee have, have asked us to put them there. Uh, and two, and one of them is one that I drank out of. <laughs> I'm sitting here, sitting over there at the helm today, making it sound good. She's the Duchess of the Dorks. She's playing trash or product placement, too. She's <laughs> Ashley Pickle. I'm not about to rob a bank. Like y'all gotta quit saying that in the comments or we're you gonna do get look, black. You look menacing. I'm in a black hoodie and a black <laughs> I guess you can't see, like there is white on it. There's a, a Nike check. Um I don't know. She was wearing a balaclava earlier too. It was I was like, you gotta take that off. That's not gonna work. Today is it could be a it could be one from our friends at Gator Tech, who's a proud sponsor of Dave Campbell's Texas football. Thanks, Gator Tech. Mm -hmm. Today is Thursday, November 28th, or 30th, rather, 2023, 364 days until Thanksgiving. Happy birthday to, um, oh boy, Ben Stiller. Oh, nice. Ben Stiller, older than you think. Really? How old do you think? 55? 58. Oh my, yeah. I let only me, said 55 let me tell you because, something. because you said older. I My original guess would have been 50. Let me tell you something. Ben Stiller at 58, still looking like a snack. Looking good. Happy birthday, Ben Stiller. It's episode 1702. On today's show, folks, we've got the top 10 Texas high school football regional final games this weekend. There's 44 of them. I narrowed it down to 10. It's getting harder and harder, honestly. Uh, then we're going to be joined by the head coach of the, of the unbeaten Jacksboro Tigers. Coach Casey Hubble will join us ahead of their big game uh, tomorrow night against Gunner. We will hear from uh, undefeated head coach Jack, uh, Casey Hubble at Jacksboro coming up here at the, in a moment. And then back half the show, the picks, my high school football predictions for all 44 UIL Texas high school football playoff games across the state if you stick around with us. Do we have first four through the door, madam? We sure do. It was Joey Hill, jersey number 69, nice. Tanner Solis, and Ryan Smiga. Welcome in, fellas. Have you, are you done casing the joint, or do you need to go finish it? I'm not going to commit a crime. Well, y'all keep acting around. Maybe I will. Keep acting around. I can't quit. Finish. Quit acting a fool, or else I'm gonna. I will. <laughs> Pickle of the regional final round, the fourth round of the Texas high school football playoffs are here. They are upon us. We're having fun with it. There are games all across the state. And it's one of the opportunities for us to. It's a strange round because you get some rematches. You get also, I think, some pretty hotly anticipated games that we've kind of had circled for a while. Um, and it's also, I don't know, we talked about this on Tep and Step. I think that we, like, there are people who are like, it's a state quarterfinal round. And it is. That is true. And I'm not going to get too mad at you if you want to call it that. But I think we need to acknowledge the challenge of winning your region. Mm -hmm. Because the region is set up for you. There are X number of teams, there's either four districts or eight districts, depending on, on 6A or 5A and below, that you have to defeat in order to get out of there. You know that. You don't really know who's coming out of the other side, mm -hmm. but this is the last time where there's like a, a charted path, and I think that winning your region is a real accomplishment. It's, it, it is the equivalent of, to me, the the awards are obviously celebrate every, every round you win in the playoffs, mm -hmm. but to me... You win your district, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. That is the equivalent of like, in my opinion, that is the equivalent of winning the your division in yes. baseball or in football, yep. right? 
winning your region is the equivalent of winning the ALCS or NLCS or winning the NFC Championship game. Yes. Right. Obviously, it's not advancing to the to the to the national or the Super Bowl or whatever. But you know what I mean. That's mm-hmm. the equivalent. And then obviously the state championship. To me, this is a fun round because it's 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 a celebration of these particular regions before mm-hmm. we get into cross regional matchups. Well, and that's the other thing too is I always feel like uh, we talk about it every single year, but the state semifinals is the cruelest round. We'll of talk the about it next week. Football. Like absolutely the cruelest round. This one is the last shot. I feel like to like really really celebrate before it's like okay. Here's the it's biggest. It's state or bust. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. either, w- like, we can play, and if we lose, then it's like we didn't even make it here. Like, regional mm-hmm. final is something to be celebrated. I agree. Absolutely. Without further ado, here's my top 10 Texas high school football games of the week in the regional final. We will start Friday in, or Saturday, rather, at Choctaw Stadium in Arlington. As the 11, in 5A Division 2, as the 11-2 and two South Oak of Golden Bears take on the 12-1 and one Lovejoy Leopards. In a 5A Division II uh, Region II uh, final. And it's, uh, it's, it's Judgment Day. It's Judgment Day for Lovejoy. That this is the team, this is the, the team that has for a while, and I think last year really, was earmarked as the South Oak Cliff Killer. Mm-hmm. Here they are a year later with an opportunity to do just that. Now remember, South Oak Cliff beat Lovejoy last year. Beat them relatively soundly, mm-hmm. but this feels like a different Lovejoy team. Feels like their defense has 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 bowed up a little bit, and they've come up with with big plays. This is also a South Oak Cliff team that I don't think has the defense that it did last year. Mm-hmm. Now that's an impossible bar. Oh, yeah. But this is an opportunity for Lovejoy to prove their 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 worth. Hondo Franklin, their quarterback, has been spectacular all year long. They've got one of the best receiver cores in the nation. Uh, they are ready for prime time. But here they have an opportunity to straight up prove it. Plain and simple. You win this game, and we're all and we're all talking about how it was they, they were the kings of the toughest region in the, in, the, in, the, in the class, and to me, will be the favorite to play at AT and T Stadium, and arguably the favorite to win the state championship. But if you lose this game, then it's kind of all for naught, and it's back to South Oak Cliff because South Oak Cliff they rule the roost. They're the team who has they've got a 15 game playoff winning streak. They have been absolutely spectacular. A lot of this is going to be whether or not Lovejoy can stop the run. Plain and simple. Because South Oak Cliff, when they're at their best, is when they're running the ball with guys like Danny Green. Can Lovejoy stop the run? Will South Oak Cliff's defense come up with big plays? How well do they match up in the secondary? It is a fascinating matchup at Choctaw Stadium going on Saturday, 3.30. Then let's matriculate to the Houston area. 2 o'clock Saturday at Veterans Memorial Stadium in Pasadena. Live on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. <laughs> it is a rematch of a District 21 6A bout as the Galena Park North Shore Mustangs take on the Humble Atasca Cedar Eagles in a really intriguing matchup. This is the, uh, they have won seven straight, the Mustangs have won seven straight games against Atasca Cedar. Mm-hmm. And last week against Cy Fair, I think there is an argument that was their most complete game of the year. Oh, by far, because either beforehand they either got up so quickly that they didn't really have to worry about playing in the second half, or for the past like three or four weeks they kind of farted around in the Started first slow. half and then they got online. So it's been a tale of two halves for that team. But they hit the Jets last week from the word go, returned the opening kick for a touchdown, never looked back. Caleb Bailey was spectacular. Their receiving core was excellent. They ran the ball well. This is an task seed team that we know what they're about. Quarterback Zion Brown has been excellent. They've gotten Tory Blaylock going, Cardi Mack running the ball. They are they are explosive, plain and simple. Remember, this was a 26-point game when they played back on October 27th. And if you look at the history, North Shore has has every one of the— they've played twice in 2019, 2021, and 2022. They played twice in those. And each of those years, North Shore won in the regular season, and then they expanded their margin in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. What happens here? Can Atascacita pull off the upset? It's a big game down there in Pasadena. In for a real treat, too, because Gavin Moritz and Trevor Bullard are both on the call Ooh, for that one. That's fun. Then— a game I'm really excited about. I won't. I won't go too far on and on about this because I'm really excited about the. Um, because I, I want you guys to, to watch the picks video, but it's going on tonight. Going on tonight, it's third, seven o'clock Thursday at Hawk Stadium in Iowa Park in a game that I think is the biggest game tonight. 
as the Albany Alliance take on the Collinsville Pirates. We're going to talk a lot about this in the picks video, so I don't want to spoil it, but a lot of this comes down to how well the Albany defense contains Logan Jenkins, the quarterback for Collinsville, who has been absolutely spectacular and is likely to go over 5,000 passing yards on the season in this game. How well do they do that? Can the can the, the Albany offense find their groove after what was some fits and starts last week against Munster? Fascinating ball game. The defending state champs are, I think, in a real tussle tonight. Uh Iowa Park, uh, it's going down Albany and Collinsville. Matt Stepp will be in attendance. Another game he's going to be in attendance for. 7 o'clock Friday at Bryce Stadium in... No, that's not true. 7 o'clock Friday at Bryce Stadium in Nacogdoches. Yeah. That's right. It was moved. It was originally supposed to be tonight at mm -hmm. 7.30, and they yes. moved it on Tuesday. It is another rematch, this one uh, in, in 2A Division One as the Timpson Bears at 13-0 take on the Garrison Bulldogs in a rematch of a game that was uh, pretty tight the first time they played. Uh, it was a it was a, a close game uh, the first time I want to say it was it was Timpson's closest game of the year, uh, and so that w that is what makes this for particularly interesting. Uh, the first time they met in district play, it was in week eleven, uh, and the final score was he said uh, confidently. Uh, the final score was 35-26, by far the closest game that Timpson has played. Now, Timpson has been on another freaking planet recently, okay? Mm -hmm. They have hung 68-58 and 68 in their three playoff games, okay? Terry Bussey has been great. Terry Bussey has been great. Hard stop. J.J. Garner has been arguably their best, Their I don't want to say their best player, but, like, he's not too far behind his cousin. No. He's been unbelievable. How does Garrison's defense game plan for them? Can they come up with plays? Furthermore, how has Garrison adjusted in the last month to make this game closer and close a nine-point gap? It was nine points last time. I expect it to be similarly close. I think this is a fascinating ball game, and I'm really interested in if Garrison can pull off the upset and knock off uh, the Region 3 champs. Keep an eye on this one because I'll tell you, Garrison, their running game has been absolutely spectacular of late. Keep an eye on this one tomorrow night. You know, a real quick kind of like oddball comparison to what I think that Timpson has done with Terry Bussey and J.J. Garner. Okay. That's been the Franklin as of last year when we were all expecting Bryce and Washington to mm -hmm. completely run away with mm -hmm. it. And then Jaden Jackson was like, yeah. hey, guys, I'm here, too. That's a good that's, comp. that's kind of what that comparison is. That's, that's a real good comp. Then let's go to 6A. 2 o'clock Saturday at the field in Pflugerville. It is a rematch. And the Battle of the Lakes District 26 6A matchup as the Westlake Chaparrales take on the Lake Travis Cavaliers. Live on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. My goodness. This is a, uh, the, you, you know these two teams. You know that they are, um, you know what they're about. We've seen this the first time uh, where uh, where Lake Travis, or rather Westlake, came away with an impressive win that really sparked them uh, this far. This is a Westlake team that we know what they're about. Their defense has been very good all year long. First time they met, but it was way back in week five. Uh, you know, it's been almost, almost, it's been two and a half months since they played. Mm -hmm. It's 20 to 14. 2014 at Lake Travis. Now I do think that Lake Travis is a different ball club. They've moved their, they've changed quarterbacks. They moved, uh, they moved their quarterback Caden Leone, who is out with injury to wide receiver, and Chaston Ditta has stepped up in a big way. But the the calling card for this Lake Travis team has been their defense as well. Marcus Boswell, Gus Cordova. How well does Reese Wise, the sophomore, play in a second matchup against Lake Travis? And what does Jack Kaiser, the star running back for Westlake, have in store? This is a fascinating, I think, low scoring slugfest, which is strange to say for a Westlake Lake Travis. Game. Mm -hmm. But the first time it was 20 to 14, I, I expect it to be in that 35 point range as well. I think it's going to be low scoring and hard hit. Well, and I think we've also seen from Lake Travis, they've been. I, I personally think they've been more battle-tested in the playoffs than Westlake has. Westlake did play Reagan, mm -hmm. which is a super, super good school. But obviously, they had Vandergriff in the by-district round. And then I think Brennan last mm -hmm. week, too. That was a huge win Green. for them. I agree. I agree. Keep an eye on that one. Then, let's go. 7.30 p.m. Saturday at Choctaw Stadium in Arlington, live on Bally Sports Southwest. It is a rematch of a District 4 6 a uh, game as the South Lake Carroll Dragons at 12-1 and take on the undefeated Byron Nelson Bobcats. You may remember this was a this was a, a, a real coming out party for Byron Nelson when they knocked off uh, when they knocked off the, uh, the the Dragons the first time. Mm -hmm. This was a week game 10. that was 34-17 back in Week 10. 
pretty honestly resounding. And and Byron Nelson was the better team mm-hmm. that game that game. I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying that. And this is a a Byron Nelson team. Tom Von Grote. I think their quarterback has been excellent. Their defense is loaded in the secondary, and that is going to be a real test for South Lake Carroll and their quarterback uh, Graham Knowles. I think you're going to need a real dose. You're going to get a real dose of South Lake Carroll's running game with Riley Wormley and Ch- D- Davis Penn. I think those are going to be the real X factors in this one uh, as far as South Lake Carroll's offense is concerned because they weren't able to throw the ball all that much on Byron Nelson the first time. Can they establish the run to then hopefully open up the passing attack? It's a fascinating ball game. It's hard to beat a good team twice. Byron Nelson and South Lake Carroll closing out the weekend Saturday night. Then... Let's go to six-man football because it is, folks, the semifinals. We're punching tickets to AT&T mm-hmm. Stadium. Five o'clock Saturday in Weatherford. It is a state semifinal in 1A Division One as the Gordon Longhorns take on the Jonesboro Eagles. Gordon has the best defense in six-man football, plain and simple. They're giving up eight points a game, which is shocking <laughs> in six-man six football. Man. Shocking. That's got to be – That's got. we've got to start talking about that as one of the best six-man defenses of all time. It's, it's, ex- it's exceptional. Plain and simple. Their defense has been outrageous. they got playmakers like Stryker Reed. It's on the Jonesboro deep offense, guys like Jacob Cisneros to Marcus Acoff to find a way through this Gordon defense. Uh, and then they've got to find a way to slow down Stryker Reed as well. And, and Jonesboro coach uh, Eddie Gallegos is a defensive guy. I'm interested to see how they match up stop for stop with them. One of the things that I'm interested in this, and we talked about this in the picks video, is also a measuring stick of Region 3 versus Region 4. Who's got the tougher region? Interested in this one, Jonesboro and Gordon punching a ticket to AT&T Stadium Saturday in Weatherford. Then, let's go to a real fascinating matchup in 3A as the this game is going down, he said to himself. 7.30 p.m. Friday night at Citibank Stadium in Forney as unbeaten Winsboro takes on unbeaten Malakoff, and I think this game rocks. Oh, yeah. Um, these oh, two teams yeah. have been absolutely dominant coming in, and both these offenses are hitting on all cylinders. Winsboro hung 72 on Whitney last week. Quarterback Kyler Finney has been absolutely outrageous offensively for Winsboro. Going up against Malakoff, who you got to see them live and in person, and they drilled Grandview for a second time last week. Oh, like from the very, very get-go. Um, their wide receiver, Chan- uh, Chancey Hogg, is really, yeah. really impressive. And then it was their jun- or their sophomore running back, uh, Jerrion Hall. Mm-hmm. That or No, not Jerrion Hall. Who was it? Oh, uh, Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones is the quarterback. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, He was fantastic. But they have a soft. I think it is Jerry and Hall. I think he is the sophomore running back. The quarterback is the quarterback is uh, Mike Jones. Is who? Mike Jones. Two eight one three three zero eight zero four. Um, this is a fascinating matchup because the thing is these offenses because they're so star studded. I think that they overshadow Mm -hmm. what are two pretty good defenses too. Yes. So this is a game that's kind of hard to call because. Normally, you'd say big, high-powered offenses expect a shootout, but both these defenses have been very good as well. Yeah, and it's funny because their quarter, especially for Malakoff, their quarterback Mike Jones is Who? the uh, Mike Jones. He uh, he plays safety for him, and he mm-hmm. had a, a pair of picks last week. Mm-hmm. But they have been. I mean, they are operating. Two eight one three three zero eight zero four. Then, I am really intrigued by this one. Seven o'clock Friday night in Stephenville. It is. 13 and 0 Alito taking on the 11 and 2 Abilene Eagles. Now let me say from the get go. Live on Dave Campbell's Texan Live. <laughs> let me say from the get go. <laughs> Alito's the favorite. Yes. If you don't hear anything else that I say, hear this. Alito's the favorite and understandable favorites. With that said, Abilene ain't going quietly. Okay. Mm. This team can ball. Okay, they're they've got big time wide receiver in Ryland Bradford. They have got a tough defense that has been very good all year long, and I think that they are going to be able to attack this Alito front seven, which is young, and be able to run the ball a little bit with guys like Bam Rayshaw. This is a fascinating matchup. The question is going to be: Can the Abilene defense keep Alito's home run hitters in check? Hoss Haney, Racine Guillory, Caden Finley. Can they keep them in check? Hawk Patrick Daniels, can they keep them in check and keep them from hitting home runs? Huge game in this one. Again, Alito's your favorite. Mm -hmm. But maybe circle this one for upset watch because I'm really interested in this one. Finally, let's go to East Texas for a big-time matchup in 3A. 
as the Dangerfield Tigers take on the Newton Eagles in a regional final in 3A Division uh, 3A Division 2. This is kind of the forgotten. Uh, I think we're all kind of waiting for Canadian and Gunner, mm-hmm. but this game as far as 3A Division 2 is concerned, I think this is the real this is the real showcase uh, this week. Dangerfield uh, really caught our attention a couple of weeks ago when they dominated Hooks, and they have been exceptional defensively this year. Chase Johnson, their quarterback, is doing great. They're giving the ball to Bubba Hampton, who is a real fun, who is a real fun playmaker. Their running back Ashton Williams has been good as well. But again, their defense is kind of what's led the way. They've been excellent. Newton is undefeated, and I think very quietly undefeated. And they've got they've got that kind of Newton Newtonish look, mm-hmm. where they've got those big time playmakers. But again, it kind of overshadows what has been an excellent excellent defense these past couple of weeks in the playoffs. They have given up 36 points, or I'm sorry, uh, 43 points in three games. Yeah, and that's kind of, I think, the fun thing for me here is the clash in styles. Dangerfield mm-hmm. moves pretty quickly. Newton's going to punch you in the mouth. Yeah, Newton's going to be the, the the physical team, but but Dangerfield can, can bow up with you too. Mm-hmm. Fascinating East Texas matchup for a spot in the state semifinals, Newton and Dangerfield. There they are, my top 10 Texas high school football games of the week in the regional finals. Of course, we'll have complete coverage for you every step of the way at texasfootball.com. And remember, we have got a ton of games on Dave Campbell's Texan Live, including some we mentioned here. So, texanlive.com. We are at Texas Football today. We're here every weekday at noon on texasfootball.com, talking football in the Lone Star State. You can follow us on Twitter at DCTF, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com. Coming up here in just a moment, we'll be joined by the head coach of the undefeated Jacksboro Tigers, Coach Casey Hubble, will join us. But first, a word from these goods and services. <clears throat> Ooh, I feel like Buster Loose. Uh, Buster Loose, come on. Get, 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 get on up. Uh, oh, yeah. Get, 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 get on up. Buster Loose, when you want to say, uh, Buster Loose, baby, do your thing. Uh, talking about Buster Loose, yeah. Uh. Hi. I'm Jennifer Potter, Executive Director of Be Well Texas. Too many people are struggling alone these days and alcohol and drug deaths are increasing. We started Be Well Texas to offer high quality, science-based addiction treatment and recovery services anywhere, even at home. We provide compassionate, caring support virtually or in person. In many cases, there is no cost for treatment if you don't have insurance, really. Welcome to Be Well Texas, we're glad you're here. Wing is the largest residential drone delivery provider in the world. Delivering to your home in less than 30 minutes. Order using an app just like other popular delivery services and Wing's automated drone takes care of the rest. It's fast, safe, and sustainable and it's now delivering to parts of Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. You can learn more at wing.com slash Texas football. Again, that's wing.com slash Texas football. Born and bred in Texas hits a little different, as it should. Texas love doing business with fellow Texans. VCR now takes its Texas roots as seriously as its many partnerships with schools and universities around the state. It's also why we're so proud to promote our brand in the pages of the Texas Bible, Dave Campbell's Texas Football, and on the airwaves of Texas Football Today. Driven by producing quality broadcast video, state-of-the-art audio, and LED video scoreboards at affordable prices, VCR now makes sure to listen to your needs in its athletic department before recommending the next best steps. Building great products is our business, and it's our focus on building meaningful long-term partnerships with our clients that sets us apart. From our 24-7, 365-day help desk, the training lab in our hometown of Red Oak, or our sports marketing business plan that puts money back in the hands of our athletic departments we support, VCR Now is built to last. Reach out to us today at info at vcrnow.com or by calling 855 855- Go VCR now. Again, that's info at vcrnow.com or by calling 855 Go VCR now. Pickle, let's go to the hotline. There are scant few teams that remain across the state of Texas with a zero in the loss column, but one of them has got a big game this week. We go to the hotline to be joined by the head coach of the undefeated Jacksboro Tigers. It's Coach Casey Hubble. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. How about y'all? Doing excellent. How are things? Uh, how are things up there in beautiful Jack County? 
man, it's the center of the world and uh, <laughs> things are going good. Um, just happy to be where we're at and, uh, you know, n- not satisfied. We want to, we want to go do it again. You guys have an opportunity to 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 make some history there in in Jacksboro. You guys are already off to uh, you you know you've got your most wins in a season uh, is since 1969. Um, I'm interested in when you felt like this team had a chance to do something special. You know when <clears throat> when I was at, at leaving Canton and thinking about coming home, mm-hmm. um, I had a chance to meet you know the kids before I took the job. Um, I had talked with Brandon Rogers. Uh, we, we were friends and he said that, um, you know, that there was a good group of kids coming and there were several groups and, um, you know, I'd hoped at that point that, that it would be a possibility. Um, but really, you know, once I got here and, uh, got my staff together and, um, you know, I, I don't really know when it was, I guess, uh, we knew we had skill kids that, that could play at a high level uh, with, you know, our quarterback at the end of the year and, and our skill kids coming back. And um, we knew that if we could get our offensive line uh, in a position to be able to, to, to be good, uh, we had a chance to, to make a pretty good run. And, um, yeah, just, just kids have done a good job. They've done an unbelievable job, including last week with that uh, that heart stopping overtime win uh, over Holiday, forty nine forty eight. Probably probably the game of the week across the state of Texas. I want to go back to overtime. You guys score on a fourth down play in the back of the end zone uh, to pull you guys within one in your possession of overtime. Can you take me through the decision to go for two in the win in in that in that moment? Yeah, you know whenever. Uh, we, I won the flip, so we chose to go, I chose to go, uh, second, obviously that's, that's what you do. Um, they went down and scored pretty quickly. Um, I believe it was about, you know, the second they scored, um, and they decided to kick a field goal. You know, it had been a shootout all night. Our offense, their de- you know, their offense defenses had, had struggled all night and, um, I just figured at that point, uh, whenever we started that series, I just said, uh, we're going to go for two whenever we score here. So let's get our best two point play together. And, um, you know, we, we struggled and fourth down, uh, Lando spins out of a tackle and finds Casey Ray in the back of the end zone. And, um, we just rolled with it. It was, it was time to (laughs) either make it happen or, or be done, and and we believe that that we could make it happen. Casey Hubble, head coach of Jacksboro, joining us here at Texas Football today. Coach, the guy at the at the center of that play, and the guy at the center of your offense has been your quarterback, Lando Belcher, a guy who was very good for you guys last year. But it seems to me, and certainly correct me if you think I'm wrong, it certainly seems like he's taken that next step in his development. What have you seen as far as growth is concerned from your QB one? Yeah, he's <clears throat> he's continued to get better. Um, but honestly, he was really, really good last year also. Um, I just think we've developed as a team better. I think we're better, um, at everything. You know, last year was our first year in the program. Um, we, we had some spots that we struggled with that, that, uh, that kind of held us back a little bit as far as an offense being able to, uh, do what we've done this year. And I just think, uh, the, familiarity us being able to go through off season um you know he's a very competitive kid he's an unbelievable shortstop point guard in basketball uh does a great job in everything he does um i just think it's time and um understanding the offense exactly where the ball needs to go and then whenever you uh, add our running game in and um you know us being able to run the ball that much better you know, I think it just opened up our passing game. I think our passing game opens up our run game. Um, it's, it's just all kind of worked out. And um, he's just continued to pro- progress like a quarterback in the same system does that that is a senior. And um, he's just done a great job. You mentioned the the, the running game and, you you know, you guys have, have gotten a, a breakout year from, from your running game as well as, um, you know, with – as well as I, I want to give some credit to the offensive linemen. I mean, the, the offensive line has, has held up in a big way. I know you guys were pretty uh, pretty senior heavy. You know, you had, had a number of returning starters from last year's team. 
Um, what can you tell us about this offensive line that has you going? Because I know they never get any credit. Yeah, they, they've done a great job. Uh, we, we did have, I think, three guys that came back uh, that were on our offensive line last year. Uh, we moved a little bit around, um, you know, moved in another kid that's a senior that had just played defense last year that now plays both ways and Josh Ward. And then we had a sophomore who really, who really grew up and has done a great job in Glendon Rodriguez. And, um, you know, you add him in with Pecos, our center and, uh, um, Wade Treadway and, uh, Jet Davenport. Uh, those guys were the returners and, um, you know, Jet, he struggled all last year with a, he had double hip, hip impingements and <clears throat> couldn't move very well at all. And, uh, got him healthy in the off season and he had surgery on both hips and, um, you know, has just moved so much better and has, has done a great job. And, um, yeah, those offensive linemen, you know, that we want to, we want to win the line of scrimmage and, and that's where it starts, whether you want to throw the ball or run it. And in our case, we want to do both and, um, they've done a great job. Our coaching staff has done a great job. And, um, you know, lastly, our kids and our community, uh, have just bought into what we're trying to do, and it, it it's worked. Uh, on the defensive side, uh, Coach, you know, you got into a shootout last week against a high-powered holiday team, uh, but your defense has has held more than held its own this year as well. You know, one of the guys who who it really seems like is 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 the heartbeat of your defense is Cannon Valenzuela, a guy who who seems to be seems to have a nose for the football every every time he he goes out there. This is a young defense. Has this defense surprised you in any way? Um, I don't know if I'd say surprised. Uh, we, we felt like we were going to be able to put a lot of speed on the field. Um, Cannon has done a great job. You know, he's, he's probably a linebacker that could play defensive end that plays free safety and, uh, does a great job in, in everything. Um, we had, we moved our middle linebacker last year and Jackson McComas, one of our main leaders of our team. Uh, we moved him down to defensive end and he has done a great job of, of um, anchoring that defensive line and, and give us some really good um, production at defensive end. And then, uh, you know, we've, we've just got some speed on the field that we feel like has helped us a lot. And, um, you know, there have been times where we've played really good defense. And then, you know, like against the Bells, against Bells, you know, we, we, we didn't make very many mistakes at all and held them, you know, I think eight times on fourth down. Um, and then last week, you know, it was a struggle. And, you know, I think, you know, matchups are huge in high school football. And uh, that's something that, you know, being in this business, I've really figured out is, uh, you know, unless you can just dominate an opponent, um, you know, one week, you know, the matchups are in your favor and another week the matchups aren't. And um, uh, we've got to do a better job of making adjustments to where we can get stops when we figure out what teams are trying to do to us. But, uh, yeah, really proud of our defense. You know, they you, we gave up way too many points last week, but you know they had a chance with just a few minutes left to to put the game away, and uh, we get to stop and make them punt and get the ball back and uh, on the the five yard line and uh, give our offense a chance. And our offense does what they do. You know, we went ninety five yards and scored, and then got the two point conversion to to tie it up. So uh, just proud of our team. Uh, the Tigers are through to the fourth round of the playoffs for the first time since they won the title back there in 1971. Um, I, I'm curious, as as an alum, this was a homecoming for you. Uh, you had a good job there in Canton, uh, but 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 the home home came calling. Uh, Mama came calling, as they say, and uh, and 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 you came home. How special is it for you personally to be to be doing this and making this kind of history uh, there at, at your alma mater? Oh, it's great. Um, the, you know, the community has been unbelievable. Um, you know, it's always great when you can uh, come whenever you can win um, and, and, you know, and people believe in what you're doing. Um, it's a little more special because I went to school here and, you know, know some know quite a few people. It's changed a lot since I was here. But, um, yeah, it's, it's special. And uh, you, you always want to be able to do it. Uh, now we we just got to keep it going and try to get another one. 
Uh, speaking of another one, Coach, uh, it is going down uh, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, at C.H. Collins Stadium in Denton. You guys will get a matchup with another 13-0 team, uh, the Gunner Tigers. Uh, I am, I, I'm not going to ask you to give away uh, everything in the game plan, but when you take a look at what you're going to be up against tomorrow night, uh, I'm interested in what you see. Yeah, they're they're a, they're a really good program. Um, uh, they do things at a at a really really high level. Um, they've got excellent kids and you know great athletes all over the field. But they're coached really really well. Also, um, yeah, we got a challenge ahead of us. Uh, we're not gonna uh, pretend like they're not supposed to be number one. Um, you know, they back to back champs and trying to do another one. And uh, we're just excited about the opportunity to get to play them again. Uh, we got them last year. Uh, we were disappointed that we ended up being the two seed last year. And, um, you know, that meant you got them in round two. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kind of what we said as a, as a program and as a staff is, uh, you know, we want to play them again. We just don't want to do it in round two. <laughs> we wanted to do it this round. And um, just glad to get that opportunity. You know, if you want to, if you want to be the best, which is what the playoffs are set to determine, uh, you're going to have to beat the best. And um, right now they hold that. So uh, uh, we're just glad to get a shot and an opportunity and uh, look forward to the challenge. He's Casey Hubble. He's the head coach of the 13-0 and Jacksboro Tigers in action tomorrow night in Denton as they take on the undefeated number one Gunner Tigers. Coach, we sure appreciate your time. Congratulations again on all your success so far, and go get them tomorrow night. Thank you, sir. There he goes. Jacksboro head coach Casey Hubble joining us here on Texas Football Today. Uh, excited to see that that showdown because that was a heart stopper last week against Holiday. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I think I made it on on. Um, yeah, it was our game of the week. Game of the week, an unbelievable play. Now Lando Belcher, he's a baller. Mm -hmm. He's a baller. They got some players on that team that are they're explosive. And um, Gunner's your favorite. I think he coach kind of more or less said as much. He said we're not going to pretend they're not the number one team for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, but keep an eye on Jacks, bro. That's a dangerous. That's a dangerous team with some big time playmakers. Uh, and if things break their right, they're going to be right in that ball game and can can make Gunner sweat. So keep an eye on that one. We appreciate Jacks, bro. Head coach Casey Hubble hopping on with us. We are Texas Football today. We're here every weekday at noon on TexasFootball.com, talking football in the Lone Star State. You can follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And of course, see us at TexasFootball.com. Coming up here in just a little bit, we're going to have the picks. And that's what we're going to do now. Yeah. But I want to invite you to go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe. Become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football subscriber. We have a very exciting announcement for subscribers tomorrow. Yes. How is that for a tease? That's what we call a lateral So tease. subscribe today so you can get the announcement tomorrow. If you subscribe today, you will be eligible to receive an announcement tomorrow. Correct. Yep. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, but, yes, we have an exciting announcement tomorrow, uh, but that ex uh, that announcement is only for subscribers. So go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe so that you don't miss out. You could, FOMO. You, Let you, FOMO you, eat you, you alive so you that could, way you subscribe. You, you could also subscribe after we announce it tomorrow, but, like... No. You heard the lady. <laughs> subscribe. This is, a bad, this is a bad sales pitch. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. But I will tell you that you'll want to be subscribed for the sake of the thing we're announcing tomorrow. Subscribe. How's that? Just do it. TexasFootball.com. Makes a great gift as well. By the way, December's tomorrow. Yeah, give someone else the opportunity to hear the announcement so, as uh, a gift. For, uh, for Crimbus, give them, uh, give them the gift of football. TexasFootball.com. There you go. Pickle, there's 44 UIL Texas High School football playoff games this weekend. Um, somebody asked me in the comments... They were like, "What's your like? What are you shooting this week? This this in the playoffs? I'm about eighty three percent. Nice. I'm about eighty three percent on on um on my picks this year, which would be which would mean that theoretically forty four times point eight three, I need to get about I need to get more than thirty six of them right to increase my percentage. That's a high bar. That means I got to go thirty six. If I go thirty six and eight, that means that my percentage will drop." Not cool. So here's hoping. Here's my picks for all 44 UIL Texas High School playoff games this weekend on Texas Football Today. We're two weeks away from the Texas High School Football State Championship games at AT&T Stadium, which means it's time for the biggest games yet. These are the picks. <laughs>
Welcome into the Picks, your guide to the Texas High School Football Weekend. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the fourth round of the 2023 Texas High School Football Playoffs. There are 88 teams left standing across the entire state. Everyone else is done. There's 88 of them. And all of them have eyes set on AT&T Stadium in Arlington, where we will crown 12 UIL Texas High School Football State Champions in just like two weeks. Yeah. And, and this is the time of year. I have friends who aren't really into high school football, but they tell me, hey, you know, wake me up whenever like it gets exciting. Go wake up your casual friends right now. This is the time to lock in because these next two weeks leading up to AT&T Stadium are going to be the most frantic, most exciting, wildest weeks of the year. The biggest games yet this season happening this week in the regional final round of the Texas high school football playoffs. There's massive games everywhere you look. We're going through all 44 of them. We start in Iowa Park. 7 o'clock Thursday night at Hawk Stadium in Iowa Park. It is the Class 2A Division 2 II Region 2 final between the Albany Lions and the Collinsville Pirates. What are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, the Logan Jenkins show. Not sure if you guys are familiar with the work of Collinsville quarterback Logan Jenkins, but he's pretty good. Uh, the numbers are shocking. He's thrown for more than 4,800 yards this year, 65 touchdowns on 73% passing. He's got a number of weapons on the outside, guys like Ryland Newman and Colin Barnes. But make no mistake, he is at the center of this offense and is their North Star. What he does for this Pirates offense is makes him one of the most valuable players in Texas high school football. It's a challenge for this Albany defense, which has been excellent all year long, leading back to its uh, going back to its state championship win last year in 2022. It's up to this defense, especially with their secondary led by Casey Fairchild, to come up with stops against this high-powered Collinsville attack. So, what is the next act of the Logan Jenkins show? Key number two, Albany's offensive balance. So Albany's going to keep the ball on the ground. Traditionally, that's what Denny Faith likes to do. And Adam Hill is their bell cow back. He's over 2,000 yards on the ground this year. He's scored 35 touchdowns. He has been a warrior for this Lions team. But they have to have balance offensively when they're really heat hitting on all cylinders. And that's going to be up to their junior quarterback, Chip Chambers, who's been very good for almost the entirety of the season. Last week against Munster, this offense kind of getting this, some fits and starts. It's going to be up to this Collinsville defense. Defense, led by Garrett Trevino to make Albany one-dimensional. Take away the run or take away the pass. Make them one-dimensional. So can Albany's offensive balance flourish or will Collinsville take away one of the things they do best? In key number three, 363 days. That is how much time will have elapsed between the last time these two teams played in the regional final last year in Mineral Wells where Albany took home a resounding thumping 66 to 34 win over Collinsville. Absolutely dominated the Pirates from stem to stern. It was honestly not that close. It was a complete domination from Albany in route to a state championship. They have had 363 days to think about it on both sides. For Collinsville, they've had 363 days to allow that to fuel them, to get them back to this point. And they have wanted another shot at Albany, an opportunity for revenge. For Albany, they've had 363 days to celebrate a state championship and to work to get back here with a target on their chest, mind you, because they are the defending state champs and a team that's taken everyone's best shot. So it's been almost an entire year since these two teams have met. What has changed? Who am I picking? I'm going with Albany. The defending state champs get the nod here on the strength of their defense. Jackson Hole has been outstanding leading this defense as well as Case and Fairchild in the secondary. They are really sound defensively and even when their offense has struggles like they did last week against Munster, they find a way to keep them in it. I think they're going to be able to come up with a couple of stops. Now, for Collinsville, their defense is no joke either. They're giving up just 19 points per game. They've been very good. They have got to find a way to slow down Adam Hill to make sure that he does not run wild in this game. I think this is one of the hardest games to call this week. This is a coin flip, and I've gone back and forth as to who I think is the favorite. But in the end, I have to give the champions the advantage. I think that having that belt around their waist means that they're the team to beat. I think Albany moves on to the state semifinals. 
Let's go to 6A, 1 o'clock Saturday at Dragon Stadium in South Lake. It is the 6A Division I Region I Final between the Allen Eagles and the North Crowley Panthers. Allen entered the playoffs at 6-4 and four, and kind of an afterthought, but they have hit the Jets recently, thanks in large part to a renewed running game led by Micah Ellis in the backfield. They have been really grinding it out on the ground, and that has been impressive to watch. It's kind of old-school Allen offense, quite simply. Now, they've got a huge Huge test going up against undefeated and rolling North Crowley. Quarterback Chris Jimerson has been impressive. Running back Ashton Cyril is putting up crazy numbers. And their defense has been spectacular. They helped Prosper last week to just 119 total yards. For Allen, they've got to continue to get that running game going, and their defense will need to stand on its head. In the end, I think North Crowley is your favorite. I think the Panthers move on to the state semifinals. Let's go to 5A Division II, 7 o'clock Friday night at Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos. It is the 5A Division II Region 4 Final between the San Antonio Piper Warriors and the Liberty Hill Panthers. This is a district rematch uh, from just about a month ago, week 11, the final week of the regular season these two teams played. And Piper came away with a very impressive 33-23 win over Liberty Hill, which really, I think, served as a coming out party for the Warriors. And since then, they have been rolling. Got a huge win last week over previously unbeaten Alamo Heights. And this offense is fun. Fun to watch. Quarterback Jake South and, and wide receivers Jake Strachan and, and Isaiah Champagne. And they've got a sturdy little running back in John Hamilton who is a bulldog out there. But make no mistake, their offense is fun, but this game comes down to what the game always comes down to against Liberty Hill. How well do you slow down the slot T, which has been absolutely fantastic, led by Ben Carter and Noah Long. They are grinding it out once again. Came away with a huge win last week over Corpus Christi Flower Bluff. In their first meeting, Piper was able to stymie the Liberty Hill the, uh, attack and force a number of turnovers. They'll need to do that again if they're going to beat a good team twice. I think this game is closer than it was the first time, but I think the result is the same. I think Piper plays in the state semifinal. To 4A Division 1 we go. 7 o'clock Friday night at Lobo Stadium in Longview. It is the 4A Division 1 Region 3 final between the Kilgore Bulldogs and the Tyler Chapel Hill Bulldogs. This is another rematch of another Week 11 matchup in which Kilgore kind of flattened Chapel Hill. 39-16 to in a big way as the Kilgore Bulldogs won the undisputed outright district championship. Now, Chapel Hill's woken up since then. Quarterback Demetrius Brisbane has gotten back on his game, and running back Ricky Stewart has been very good. Can they find a way through a Kilgore defense that's already stymied them once? That's one thing to keep an eye on. The other key factor in this game is the status of Kilgore quarterback Derek Williams, who left last week's game with an injury. If he doesn't play or he is not 100%, this game gets really interesting, and I think that things go uh, get, get a little bit cattywampus. I do think the Kilgore running game, led by Rayshon Williams, is good enough to carry the load, though, and I think they're going to be able to come up with a couple of big running plays, and the defense stands firm. I think Kilgore moves on to the state semifinal. To 3A Division 1 we go. 7 o'clock Friday night at Bastrop Memorial Stadium. It is the 3A Division 1 Region 4 final between the Edna Cowboys and the Blanco Panthers. Blanco turned a lot of heads last week, including mine, with their 34 0 whopping of goal at awfully impressive quarterback Cameron Anderson is a dual threat who leads a run heavy offense but he can make you pay in a variety of different ways and obviously their defense played exceptional last week they've gotten better as the season has gone on meanwhile they're taking on an Edna team that a couple weeks ago they knocked off Jordanton and in my mind took command of region four but then last week against industrial they really struggled had to score late to win it quarterback Jaden Clay is their superstar came up with the play at the big moment but it was their defense that held them in it while the offense figured things out. As always, for Blanco, whenever you play a team like Edna, it all comes down to how well you match up up front. The question is how well does Blanco match up with the big offensive and defensive lines that Edna is going to throw out there. I think this game is close. It's going to be really hard hitting, but I think that Edna comes away with a win. And we will punch our first four tickets to AT&T Stadium this week in the six-man state semifinals. Five o'clock Saturday in Weatherford. It is a 1A Division I state semifinal between the Gordon Longhorns and the Jonesboro Eagles. Fascinating matchup in this one. Gordon, for all their weaponry that they have, guys like Stryker Reed uh, kind of leading the way at the spread back position, their defense has been their calling card. They have the best defense in 1A Division I, allowing just eight points per game. It is serious 
serious business what they do on the defensive side. On the Jonesboro side, they have a number of weapons, including Jacob Cisneros, who's kind of their do-it-all star. Demarcus Acoff is a strong runner as well. Uh, can they find a way through this Gordon defense and crack the code on a, a defense that nobody's been able to get past? The other thing about these semifinals, and we'll talk about this a lot next week whenever we get to this, is it kind of measures the different region strengths, right? Is Region 1 better than Region 2? This is a Region 3 versus Region 4 matchup. I think Region 3 is a little bit stronger than Region 4. I think that gives Gordon the advantage. I think the Longhorns move on to at and Stadium. But those are far from the only big games in the regional finals of the Texas high school football playoffs. Let's get to the lightning round. In 6A Division 1, remember last year, Spring Westfield gave Duncanville a big scare. I think Duncanville wins it, but it may be just as close. I think Galena Park North Shore wins a rematch over district rival Atascacita. And speaking of rematches, it's the Battle of the Lakes Volume 2. I think Austin Westlake edges out Lake Travis. To 6A Division 2 we go. I like Byron Nelson to beat South Lake Carroll for a second time this season. And speaking of rematches, I like DeSoto over Cedar Hill. Humble Summer Creek keeps rolling with a win over Fort Bend Hightower. And it's Austin versus San Antonio. I like Dripping Springs over Cibolo Steel. To 5A Division 1 we go. Keep an eye on this one. I think Alito beats Abilene, but I've got this on upset alert. And in Region 2, I like Forney to take down Lancaster. I like Smithson Valley to take down AM Consolidated. And it's the Coastal Bend versus the Rio Grande Valley. I like Corpus Christi Miller over Brownsville Veterans Memorial. 5A Division 2 we go. I like Frisco Emerson over Colleyville Heritage. Flip a coin in this one, but I'm going with the champs. Give me South Oak Cliff over Lovejoy. And I like Port Natchez Groves to roll into the state semifinals with a win over Huntsville. To 4A Division 1 we go. I like Port Lavaca Calhoun over San Antonio Davenport. Hardest game to call this week, plain and simple. I like Anna in a very close one over Stevensville, and give me Decatur to take down Brownwood. For Division 2 we go, I'm going with Wimberley over Sinton, and it's a rematch of the 2020 state championship game. I like Carthage over Gilmer. Canyon West Plains Cinderella season continues with a win over Glen Rose, and I think Belleville takes down Jasper. To 3 Division 1 we go, I think Brock takes down district rival Paradise for the second time this season. I think Franklin avenges their earlier loss to Lorena to move on to the state semifinal and give me Malakoff to beat Winsboro. 3 Division 2 we go. Canadian continues her domination of Region 1 with a win over Wall, and Gunner continues her domination of Region 2 with a win over Jacksboro. It's a high-flying Region 3 title game. I like Newton over Dangerfield, and in Region 4, I'm going with Tidehaven over Poth. To 2 Division 1 we go. I'm going with Toller to keep running with a win over Marlin, and give me Hawley over Stratford. A couple of rematches on the right side of the bracket. I like Timpson to take down Garrison for a second time this season, and same goes over Furio, I think they beat Ganado again. The 2A Division 2 we go. I like Sunray over Clarendon. Chilton takes down Fall City. And Mart wins Region 3 again with a win over Lovelady. And who will punch their ticket to AT&T Stadium this week in the six-man state semifinals? In 1A Division 2, I'm going with Benjamin over Klondike and Richland Springs over Oglesby. And in 1A Division 1, I like Westbrook over Happy. And those are the picks. I picked all 44 UIL Texas High School football games this weekend, so now you can let me know. What am I wrong about? Leave comments down below. Don't forget that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com, where you can find complete coverage of the 2023 Texas High School football playoffs at texasfootball.com slash playoffs. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the regional finals of the Texas High School football playoffs. We'll see you. There it is, the picks. Week, the regional finals round, week 15, theoretically. It's the 15th time we've done that. Mm -hmm. And we'll do it one more time next week. We'll do all 20 semifinals. And then we'll do 75 of them for state football. Uh huh. We'll do a lot. Um, anyway, we appreciate you paying attention to that. And we appreciate Mallory Hartley putting that together. Um, and now, here's what we're doing, guys, this weekend, because I know you guys all care about my prediction stats. 37 for heaven, okay? Because if I get 37 right, that means it'll be above the 83% that I've got for the season. I do not anticipate that. My guess my guess is that I end up at about 75%, which would be what, 33? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 33. My guess is if, if I'm tell, if I'm putting a, a prediction on it, I would say on my predictions, I'd say I'm going to go. Just say you, you have got to be stopped. I'm going to go 33 and 11. You can't predict everything. It's my guess. I'm going to go 33 and 11. And I'm going to guess that that prediction is wrong. 
you're too far in the weeds. Let's go over to Ashley Pickle for America's second favorite segment, Final Thoughts. Um, We just had some breaking news. Yeah. We have a story up, so we can break it. Boo, 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 boo. Do I have the breaking news center? Mike Craven, Dave Campbell's Texas football college football senior writer, has confirmed the report from Sikkim 365's Colt Barber that Baylor will hire Jake Spavital to be their next offensive coordinator. The former Texas State head coach and current Cal offensive coordinator will join the Baylor Bears as their new offensive coordinator. So there you go. There's some breaking news here on Texas football today. We're a news program. Sure. We just did some news. That's true. So we're a news program. It's going to do it for us. Thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And, of course, see us at TexasFootball.com. Thanks again to Casey Hubble, head coach of the Jacksboro Tigers, for being our guest. For Ashley Pickle, I'm Greg Tepper. Vince Young, please meet your player of the year trophy. We'll see you tomorrow for a live mailback show on Texas Football Today. Bye.